Okay, Antonio, the hardest part of making this box is pretty much done. The rest of it should be a little bit easier. What we need to do next is make that removable tray and then the divider in the box. And so what I've done is I've added to the set of plans that I made. So make sure you download a copy of these. There's a link in the description. Ultimately that tray will drop in just like that. The thing to keep in mind is you want to have a little bit of wiggle room front to back so that it can slide around a little bit. It can be a little bit snug on the side to side. I mean, obviously you don't want it so tight that you can't get it in there, but mostly you just want that extra room front to back. I thought it'd be easy to make the box first and then we can measure the size of that and make sure that we can get the divider and the cleats, to, the support cleats to fit correctly. First thing I wanna do is cut out all four sides of the box. Even though I've got the dimensions for the bottom, don't cut it out just yet. As far as its strength, it doesn't matter which way the grain direction goes on plywood. It's just an aesthetic choice. And on drawers or a tray in this case, I think it always Always looks best to have the grain running along the edges rather than it having go up and down but you know you can do it either way so what I'm gonna do here is measure out the height of the box which is a little over two inches I'll have to check the plans and set up my rip fence accordingly oh it's two and a half so I want to set my rip fence up two and a half inches from the edge of the blade and remember we're measuring on this side of the blade, not this side. To get an accurate measurement, make sure that you measure from the side of one of the teeth because the teeth will extend out a little bit wider than the kind of the inside part of the blade. So I'll measure it to two and a half inches there and lock it down. I know you're using one of these grippers too and always make sure that you set it up so that both sides of the board are supported. So here I'm just gonna put this piece over here and then I've got this leg right here that's gonna support that part of the board. So it's got this channel here that the cut can go through. Now that we've got those strips for the four sides, there's gonna be extra on there, and that's good because we can use those for tests. We need to cross cut these down to two equal lengths, and I don't think we've made these kind of cuts before, so what you're gonna need is either your miter gauge on your table saw, or I'm not sure if you have a miter saw or not. If you have a miter saw, I think that's probably gonna be your best, easiest solution. If you have just the table saw with a miter gauge, what you'll wanna do is attach a board to the front of your miter gauge. It should have a couple of either holes or slots like this one in it that you can take a scrap board and just screw into place. And so that just gives you an extension on your miter gauge. You want your miter fence to be as close to the saw blade as possible. I mean, it could even touch it if you want, and if it cuts it, that's okay. But in my case, I'm gonna have to use a couple of washers because these, these slots are so big. So this will just hold it in there. You know, every one of these is gonna be a little bit different probably. Okay, so there's my extension fence. The two longest sides of that tray are eight and a half inches long. So I'm just going to measure again from the this edge of my blade. And I'll just make a mark at eight and a half inches right here. Now what I can do is take another piece of scrap wood and line it up with that eight and a half inch mark and I'll clamp this into place. The whole idea of using stop blocks is so you can get multiple cuts that are all exactly the same length. Honestly, in this case, since I'm only cutting two, another option would be to just cut two pieces oversized and then kind of sandwich them together, one on top of the other, and then cut them both at the same time down to that exact length. But I think it's important to at least know how to use stop blocks to get accurate cuts. I wanna make sure that my 
rip fence is out of the way. You don't want that getting in there and causing any kind of kickback. So what I'm gonna do is take the edge of my board, line it up against the stop block and cut these out. For the two shorter sides of the tray, I'll show you how to use the miter saw, which is, I think, the, my preferred method for cross-cutting. I, I think it's a lot easier to just set up and to get accurate cuts every time. If you were gonna be cross-cutting some longer pieces, and you know your miter saw isn't that wide, you could attach an extension fence, just like I did on the miter gauge. Your miter saw will have holes in the fence here, so you can just attach a board like this and then screw it into those holes and then it gives you plenty of extra room to add a stop block but since these two sides are going to be so short i don't even need to set up an extension fence what i do need to set up is the stop block so you can just clamp a board onto the fence that comes with your miter saw or mine comes with a clamp like this just for that purpose. So what I wanna do here is with the saw unplugged, just lock the head down like that. Then I can measure. Here's my stop block. And I mean, it comes with this ruler on the fence, but not very accurate. Slide this stop block over to five and five eight. There. Now. Clamp that in place. And if you don't have this kind of clamp, just attach a clamp to the fence itself. So I've got that kind of loosely on there right now. I'll just kind of tweak it. So like on the miter gauge, I'm just gonna press this up against the stop block, hold it in place, and then start the saw and then pull it down to make the cut. And once the cut is made, I wanna release the saw, let it come to a stop before pulling it back up. If I do one of these really quick, what can happen is on that upswing, when the saw is still spinning, this little cutoff piece can kick back. Next, I want to install a couple of dado blades into my saw. Remember, you'll have to remove the riving knife and the blade guard. And what we're gonna do here is make quarter inch rabbits along the edges of these pieces. And the one thing you gotta know about plywood is that if it says it's a quarter inch, chances are it's not really a quarter inch thick. It's probably a little bit less. You can measure it and see for yourself. Um, it doesn't really matter exactly what that dimension is here as long as we're able to Cut these rabbits at that thickness. So all I'm going to do here is attach the outer blade The spacer that you need between the blades so the teeth don't rack up against each other and then the other blade I don't think I need any chippers for this cut when I cut those four sides, I had some cutoffs, scraps left over. So I'll use those to run a test. Always a good idea to run tests. And it's very possible you don't even need to use that dado insert plate because this is pretty narrow. My regular insert plate works just fine. Now what you wanna do is lower this to half the thickness of these pieces. So it's gonna be less than an eighth of an inch that you're taking off of these. It's a very shallow cut. And if this looks familiar to you, it's because this is basically the way we built the box itself. So I'll lower this down to about there. Again, this isn't a critical measurement, just somewhere like that. And like before, I'll set up a sacrificial fence here and clamp it to my rip fence. So really probably what I'll need to do is just embed those blades into that fence. It'll be about like that. I want it to be the thickness of one of these boards. Looks like that should be about it. I'm just feeling for the tooth blade. Now I can set up my gripper so that it holds it in place through that whole cut. And I don't know if you're aware that this 
piece here supports that side of the gripper against the table. So I always lower that down whenever I can, like that. That way it's fully supported all the way through the cut. And remember when you're making these, just keep that board pressed down and against the fence. So I'll run a test here on my little scrap piece. Now I can evaluate that cut and see if I need to make any adjustments. It looks like I probably went a little bit deep. It looks like it's a little bit more than half the thickness of the wood. It doesn't really matter, but I think I'll lower the blades just a little bit. But the main one I want to check is this dimension. So I got another piece of the, well, this is the actual side of the tray and I can drop it in here and just see how well that fits. And that looks pretty good. I don't think I need to make any adjustments there. If this thin side is protruding a little bit, I'd rather have that than, I'm gonna exaggerate this, than have it fit like that. Because in that case, I really wouldn't be able to sand this whole piece down to get it even. But with this down maybe slightly lower like that, I can use my sander and sand this piece all flush really easily. So the first thing I'll do is cut a rabbit along one long edge of each of these pieces. All right, the next two cuts I wanna make are on both of the short ends of the two short pieces. So I'm gonna be using my miter gauge and my rip fence for these rabbit cuts. And this is the only time that you will ever use a miter gauge and the rip fence together. It's safe to do it since we're not cutting all the way through the board. And just as a reminder, if you're making any kind of a cross cut or any cut where you're cutting all the way through the board, you never want to use both of these at the same time because that can cause that cut off piece in there to kick back at you. Now I can set these four sides together and cut the bottom to fit. Quarter inch plywood is so lightweight that it's, it's almost too, I don't know, delicate to use any of the big woodworking clamps I have. So what I like to do is set this together and, and you'll, you'll see how the sides go into those rabbits like that. And just kind of set this together and, <laughs> uh -huh. and clamp it together with either rubber band or masking tape. Painter's tape works really well for this too, but anyways, let's see if I can do this. It's sort of together like that. And big rubber band. Yeah. Come on. This worked perfectly in rehearsal. <laughs> okay, let's one more try. There we go. <laughs> Okay, so that kind of holds it together. Now what I could do is cut this bottom to fit that inside. And kind of like before, I didn't want to cut it before cutting this all together because the depth of those rabbits is probably not exactly halfway. So now I can get a good fit. Rather than using a tape measure to measure this inside opening, I'm just gonna use a scrap of wood, set it in there and make a mark. Don't be surprised if this, this thin plywood kind of bows out like that because it, it can be pretty, pretty flexible. But once we glue that bottom in place, that'll help square it all up. I've got my regular blade back in my saw and I'll use those marks to line up my rip fence to make these cuts. You know what I just did? I thought, well, it'd be a good idea to test this tray, make sure that it fits inside of this box. And you know what? It's too big. It doesn't fit in this way. And I couldn't figure out why, where did I screw up on that? And my numbers are correct. I just, for some reason, transposed them and cut those too long. Luckily, it's on those two long sides, so I won't have to cut any new rabbits. All I need to do is just cut those down a little bit. But I'm glad I caught it now before I glued this all together. All right, let's see if I have better luck this time. Uh, 
That looks much better. So this is gonna go over on this side and have some room front to back. So it's just the same as the rest of the box, but just, you know, a thin coating of glue. Don't need a whole lot on this. And again, if you can't find any rubber bands the right size for this, just wrap some masking tape around it. Now I can drop the bottom in place. This bottom is going to be important to kind of help square it up. I want to make sure that I get a rubber band around this center because that's where that plywood is bowing out a little bit. It's probably a good idea to put some weight on the base of that just to kind of help press it into those rabbits. So I'll just add a driver and my drill. In case you're wondering, yeah, this is exactly the same way I built all 70 through, 73 of those drawers on that cabinet. That took a little bit of time. And the same way I made all of these trays here out of just quarter inch plywood and glued together, clamped together with rubber bands. It's a really effective method. And once that's dry, all that's left to do is just sand it down nice and smooth all the way around. I think I want to reconsider my design on how this fits in there. As I started putting together these support cleats and that divider, I was just running into little problems that I could see would become bigger problems down the road. So I'm gonna hit the sketch up a little bit and I think I've got an idea for a better design on this. So for now, get that tray made.